In this particular video, you'll see why bees die after they sting you, a mommy spider getting devoured by her own kids, and a snake swallowing its own tail. Your nightmare fuel, I assure you. Buckle up, kids. Number 10. Argali. The Argali is a pretty popular wild sheep, mainly because of its size and twisted horns. With males weighing up to 720 pounds, it is the biggest wild sheep species by a considerable margin. That being said though, the females tend to be way smaller, sometimes weighing less than half of their male counterparts. Apart from body size, male and female Argalis also differ in horn size, with the males usually having the upper hand. On average, a male's horns can grow to well over 6 feet and weigh about 50 pounds. The horns are important for both protection and fanning off other males during the mating season, usually between October and mid-January. And the fights can get pretty intense, to say the least. Two males can sometimes ram their heads together so hard that the impact can be heard from half a mile away. Despite being such useful weapons for survival and reproduction, though, the horns can sometimes be the end of a male Argali. Thanks to their twisted nature, it's not uncommon for the horns to grow into an Argali's face, which is basically a death sentence, either due to an infection or just making it impossible for the animal to feed. Additionally, the sheer size of the horns can also become a bit of a burden as an Argali grows old, making it hard to forage. Number 9. Both Termites and Ants Not wanting to be at the mercy of their predators, termites and ants use a mechanism called autithesis to protect themselves, or rather their territories. It's suicide, actually, and the ants and termites only use it as a last resort. While the process and the end product might vary slightly between the two groups of insects, the mechanism is pretty much the same. Autithesis candidates have an engorged gland that bursts when the muscles around it contract. A toxic, sticky secretion is then released, which works to both kill and slow down enemies. The ants and termites only use this in their quarters so that the dead insects block the burrows, effectively sealing them off from attackers. Also, autithesis is mostly used against other invertebrates, specifically arthropods, instead of the bigger vertebrate predators. In fact, research has shown that ants in particular specifically developed this technique to target arthropods, as stinging was only useful in deterring large vertebrates. That being said, the sticky secretion released during autithesis has also been found to be quite effective against vertebrate predators, probably due to having a not-so-nice taste. Number 8. Honeybees Unlike their termite and ant counterparts, bees are pretty efficient at stinging, something that probably a lot of animals understand. Those that don't understand, though, usually find out pretty fast when a few of these bittersweet insects decide to administer justice. This is carried out by the worker bees, which are the ones you'll see flying around all the time. On top of protecting their colony, they also build and clean the hive, collect food in terms of protein and nectar, and help with air circulation by beating their wings. Of all of these functions, the workers usually have to worry about protection as it's usually a ticket to death, especially if it's against humans. And it's not really about being killed. The stinger is directly attached to the abdomen instead of being, say, an independent part. So, when a honeybee attacks, it's basically just ripping off a part of its abdomen and with it a few vital internal organs like glands, a venom sac, and the digestive tract as well. This leaves a large open wound which ultimately leads to death. Number 7. The Spider When we talk about mothers giving their all for the kids, the spider species Stegdophus dumicola, which I'm pretty sure I mispronounce, is certainly one of the best examples. Endemic to South Africa, the species is one of the best documented cases of what scientists call matrophagy, or mother eating in simpler terms. Yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. The young spiders feed on their mother at some point. Before that, though, the mommy spiders will usually wear themselves out as they try to keep up with the younglings' voracious feeding. The moms, along with the virgin female spiders who can't reproduce, produce a nourishing fluid that they directly feed to the younger spiders. As time goes by, these female spiders use up so much of their bodies that they basically liquefy their insides. And when they can no longer feed the young ones, these juvenile spiders crawl into their moms and just dig in. The males, on the other hand, don't do much except for mating. But they lead pretty short lives, dying within just a month of hatching compared to their female counterparts that hang around for about a year. Number 6. Babirusa Native to Indonesia, the babarusas are known for the curved tusks in males that sometimes grow right into their skulls. Females can have tusks too, but they're usually less prominent. While they might appear like horns, the tusks are actually teeth, constituting the lower and upper canines. 
And each of the pairs serves a different purpose during a fight with other males. The lower tusks usually serve as offensive weapons, while the upper pair comes into play during defense. While the fights are for exerting dominance and mating purposes, they also help keep the tusks in check as the frequent grinding ensures they don't eventually grow into the skull. This isn't very likely as most of these males lead largely solitary lives, and the female Barbarusas, on the other hand, have robust social lives, staying in groups of up to 80. Number 5. Fascagale. Also known as the Wambanger and the Mousesack, Fascagale is a genus of three species of marsupials, namely the Northern Brush-Tailed Fascagale, the Brush-Tailed Fascagale, and the Red-Tailed Fascagale. They're all endemic to Australia, where their mating season runs between May and June, and the young ones, usually six per female, pop out after 30 days. Unlike most marsupials, Fascagales lack a pouch to carry their young ones in. Instead, they form a temporary fold of skin around their mammary glands, sometimes referred to as pseudopouches. This is where the young ones stay for the first seven weeks of their lives. After this period has elapsed, the mums move them to a nest and nurse them for about 20 weeks. Depending on the sex of this new generation, they can live for either one or three years. The female Fascagales usually live longer, while the males basically sacrifice themselves to keep the species going. The males attain sexual maturity after one year, at which point they get into frenzied intercourse until they drop dead. The true male dream. During this mating period, they even forego food and travel further away from their homes to find as many mates as possible. According to scientists, this act of mating to death reduces undue competition for the youngsters and their moms. Number 4. Sheep. Sheep have been human companions for the longest time now. In fact, they were among the first animals to be domesticated some 10,000 years ago in ancient Mesopotamia. For the longest time, the sheep were kept for their meat, milk, and their skin. As years went by, people realized that the wool was just as useful, so they would pluck it off during molting season. This is all good for the sheep as they usually grew just enough wool to keep away from both cold and heat. But things took a darker turn with the invention of shears as it meant wool could be harvested quicker and far more efficiently. This consequently led to selective breeding for even more wool, a practice that continues to this very day. As a result, the sheep bred for this purpose need human intervention lest they choke up on their excessive wool. The unnatural amounts of wool can lead to temporary blindness, skin ulcers, and even death, especially during the dry season. It also collects too much moisture in urine, which attracts flies to lay eggs in the skin folds. These, after some time, hatch into maggots that start feeding on the sheep when it's alive. Number 3. Deer. Scientists consider deer antlers to be one of the most over-the-top ways of attracting mates. Aside from being large, the antlers grow pretty fast at rates of about an eighth of an inch for deer below one year and a whopping quarter inch in older males, making it one of the fastest growing animal tissues. And they grow back bigger after each annual shedding until they eventually reach the maximum size over several years. As graceful as they are though, antlers are a bit of a handicap to the deer as they require a lot of resources to regrow and maintain every year. But that's really not how the most deer end up killing themselves, it's with their conspicuous displays of sexual availability. The problem with antlers comes from the males going at each other during the mating season in a bid to score over more females. It's not uncommon to find a battling deer pair with their antlers intertwined and unable to break free. In such cases, there's little the two animals can do rather than wait for imminent death from falling off of a cliff, drowning, becoming an easy meal for a predator, or just straight up starving to death. For the lucky ones, a kind-hearted human with a saw is certainly a welcome combination. That being said, the antlers can also break off on their own without any human intervention. It just doesn't make for that good of a story. Number 2. The Turtle it's a bit complicated for most animals in this video to kill themselves, but for the turtles, it's as simple as turning upside down. Yeah, that's right. Unlike a lot of species out there, most turtles will have a hard time getting back on their legs if they somehow land on their backs. This doesn't necessarily apply to all of them, though. Depending on the shape of the shell, some species are generally unstable on their back, which means they can easily roll right up after a fall. These will usually have a dome-shaped shell that makes rolling up fairly easy. For others, though, the shell is a bit flatter, so they're pretty much stable whichever way they turn. Upside-down turtles are usually at the risk of either starving to death or dying from heat stress since these reptiles, like all the other cold-blooded animals, depend on their surroundings to maintain their body temps. Most turtles in this position die from heat stress literally in minutes, so if you see one there, just kinda nudge them. Number 1. Snakes. Some snakes can actually kill themselves, but not by their venomous bites, but by swallowing their tail. 
You've probably seen this thanks to countless videos shared online by snake keepers. So, what's up with that? Is it too much hunger? Yes, but not in the way you think. Snakes, being cold-blooded animals, depend on their environment to maintain a certain body temperature that's ideal for their survival. That's why they'll move when the surrounding temperature veers off too much for their comfort. In an enclosure, this isn't always possible. When the readings shoot up, it causes a spike in the snake's metabolism, which effectively tricks the reptile into believing it needs more food. The high temperature also means the snake cannot differentiate its body from the environment, so it interprets the tail movement as that of prey. And that's when it unknowingly tries to chow down on itself. If not spotted early enough, the tail could reach the snake's stomach, at which point the digestive juice is set in, leading to death. Saving a snake in such a position usually involves just pulling the tail out of its mouth or applying hand sanitizer, as demonstrated by this guy in this viral clip. See you all next time!